So welcome to our inaugural video, the series of videos we're introducing. Today will be on home improvement. But we might also scare you in the future with some of our golfing exploits, That's scary. car reviews, anything we feel like talking about that we think might be of interest to people. We're sitting in front of a project that Tom just completed. The thing behind us here is a fireplace insert that Tom wanted to put into his house that didn't exist. This was just a plain wall just a few weeks ago. And now he's got this entire insert built up with shiplap, and it's just gorgeous. He puts some crown molding around the room. So we're going to walk you, slow walk you, really, through the entire project from how Tom planned it, the things he purchased, the materials, some of the tools he used. And we're really targeting this video at beginners, people who might want to give this kind of thing a try, but have been hesitant, kind of fearful, maybe even. I don't know what I'm doing. I could ruin things. Tom's real good at it. He's been at it for 40 or 50 years. In fact, I'm going to shut up and let Tom tell you about his background in doing this kind of thing and how the video is going to unfold. And I think we may have four or five of these by the time we're done, taking you all the way to the conclusion. So Tom, want to tell people how uh, we're going to go forward here and how you went forward with the project? Well, yeah, sure. Um, I'm an avid DIYer. I do everything in my house myself because I prefer it that way. I prefer the results I get. Um, I typically don't uh, go outside even to professionals because I enjoy doing the work and I'm always satisfied with my end product. So um, this is a house that we moved into about six months ago and there's lots of opportunities to make improvements and this is the first large one that I've done uh, which as uh, Lenny was saying it's a basically an insert into uh, to put a fireplace in and put a TV up. And what's interesting about this is the this wall that this is against is a shared wall with the neighbor. Uh, so we couldn't go back or couldn't go back into the wall because uh, you know, we don't want to end up with the fireplace <laughs> in, in his house. So the thing was to build it up. Now, the builder also offered a fireplace, but it stuck out about 30 inches into the room, and I just didn't want that, that to happen. So what I did was I designed this enclosure so that it, it comes out actually about 8 inches from the wall and has everything in it that uh, supports the fireplace and the TV. So, And I was here throughout the length of the project, not every minute of every day, You'll see as the videos progress, I walk through the front door, because I live about 20 minutes away. And, uh, and usually I start up and say, well, where did Tom get to today? But we'll, we'll keep it sequenced well enough so that you, you see everything that he did and, and, and how he went about doing it. And again, it's not going to be by fast. This is not one of those videos where we're going to assume you know a whole bunch of stuff. So we're just going to gloss over something. Yeah, and then he cut all these pieces. <laughs> We're going to show you some of that. We're going to show you how he set up the saw to cut the pieces, how he planned it all out. Yeah, the key is this video is more about how I did it than how you should do it. Um, I make my own decisions as how I did it. Uh, you should make your own decisions if you undertake a project too. And make sure that, that it's exactly the way you want it to be. Just do it yourself and enjoy it. Now, he's being a little humble, a little bit modest here. I'm a mechanical engineer by education, and I can tell you that the decisions he made and the approach he took are rock solid. So you might want to file some of these thoughts that he had away for your own use, because when it comes time for you to do a project like this, and you're, you're trying to think of how do I, I got to attach it. I mean, this is not freestanding. It's attached to that wall. And, and the way Tom did it, I think is, is superlative. Uh, you probably won't even find contractors to do it as well as Tom did it. And I'm, not, I'm not talking about exotic, over-the-top things that are impossible for the DIY or to do themselves. But they're more painstaking, they're more sure-footed, they're more solid. So the, the things he's done, are, as, as Tom says, it's not a prescription for how to do it, but there's a lot of good, a lot of good techniques and decisions made here that would serve anybody. 
doing a project of their own if they followed some of the things that Tom did. So, and I did a poor job, as, as my wife tells me I always do when we go to parties, by not introducing the both of us, but, <laughs> but <laughs> Tom, Tom hey, Sullivan is a good, good friend of mine, and, and he's been doing this kind of thing for years, and I'm Len Doobie, and, and we both live in, in the southeastern part of Pennsylvania, about 20 minutes apart. Um, and as I say, you know, when the weather gets nicer, which is starting to turn right now, it's, a, it's February. And it's yeah. pretty darn, it's almost golfing time, yeah, isn't it? It's 60 sometimes. I know. So with all that said and done, we'll cut this video off and we'll proceed with some of the very first steps Tom took to lay this project out in his mind and get it rolling. But I think it's important to note that what you're seeing is what Tom imagined from day one. This is almost, this is it. It's not like it invented itself along the way, and, you know, he had this thought, and then he had to figure out how to do it and bring it to life. Break it down into a bunch of small steps. Because you can always do one little step and, and, and get through it and make it right. Uh, just, you know, build upon that with another step and another step and another step until it's, until it's complete. Now, there's good news for you folks, which is for the rest of this video series, you're not going to have to look at this face anymore. Because I'll be on the other side of the camera filming the guy that knows what he's doing and is doing all the work. But this was by way of introduction. <laughs> you know who's involved in the project. Although you'll hear me talking a lot. I've done a very little bit of this kind of work. Nothing at all to the level Tom takes it. And that was partly why I was interested in kicking this video series up in the air. So you'll be hearing me ask questions that are legitimate. I mean... I don't know about some of the stuff. And if beginners are tuning into this series of videos, neither do you. And I hope you'll appreciate some of the questions that you hear me asking. Now, sometimes I know the answer. It doesn't matter. I want, I want the question out there for those of you who might not. And to give Tom a chance to explain how the equipment works and how his thinking worked and how it all came together. So that, that's my contribution to doing, <laughs> doing the filming, the video editing, <laughs> and asking questions that I hope will illuminate that, yes, it does take skill and it does take tools to do the kind of stuff that Tom does, but it's not outside the grasp of people who are interested and want to give it a try. If you have the right kind of instruction and you're exposed to it the right way, it's, you know, as I like to say, and I don't mean to demean anything, it's not rockets or science. But it does need to be done with, with care and forethought. And we hope, I think you're going to find that Tom's an excellent teacher in this video series. And that what he conveys through the camera to you would help you get a good head, head start on a project of your own. And feel comfortable doing it. Yes. But I will, I will finish this off by saying tools are important. And after watching these videos, if you're not ready to make a, even a nominal investment in decent tools uh, with which to do a project like this, you probably ought to skip it. Why do I say this? Because that's what I tried to do once upon a time. I tried to go on the cheap. And, and uh, if you want results to turn out looking like Tom's, then you need at least I'm not talking about a gigantic truckload of tools like a professional who does this for a living would have, although you might have a lot of the stuff Tom has. But you need some complement of, of, of decent tools um, to do the job right and, and repeatedly and professionally. And you'll see those. We'll point those out during the course of this project. And, and you'll, you know, then you can go anywhere you want, any of the big box stores and start pricing stuff out. And I'm, I'm pretty sure, by the way, that if you called in a professional to build this, it, you're, you're talking five digits. Yeah, you are. For sure. Yeah. Over, over 10,000. I don't know if it would get to 20. No. But somewhere in that range. And for a lot less than that amount of money, including materials, you could buy the materials and the tools that you need. Just start, start with a small project until you're comfortable 
then make it a little bit bigger or enhance that project, whatever it might be. Um, but, but take it a little little chunk at a time rather than trying to you know go for the gold on the, the, your first shot. And that, that's good advice. And by the way, that'll also limit the amount of tools you need at any one time to start a project. But then as you expand, you buy more tools. And, but yeah, if you, if you do stuff yourself, you're going to save money. And having the tools to do it with is part of that equation. All right, we ready to go? Ready. Onward. Stay tuned.